Ladies and gentlemen, Kenan Lafferty returns to you once again this Saturday, November 12th, 2011. And today's episode is going to be dealing with painting environments. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to be going into the techniques that I used in the most recent splash image for League de Legendos. As we will see here, let's pull this thing up. Rump a tump, rump a tump. All right, let's check this out. Sun gets the better. All right, oh, that's great. All right, League de Legendos. So, for those of you who had the privilege of seeing the art spotlight for Fizz, it was quite uh, interesting, and I had quite a few people talking to me about wanting to know the techniques that went into it. And not only that, but wow, so loud, so loud. Yikes. Okay, but here's the best part right here. You go about 21 seconds in. Let's see if we can catch it. Bam! Look at that. <laughs> now, a lot of people have been thinking that I was responsible for this, but I cannot take credit for it, as it was my coworker, aka Muscles Malone. He doesn't have a red name on the forums yet, but when he does, that's going to be it. He actually drew that when I got up from my desk and I came back to find Catfish Fizz and uh, his shark with uh, mustaches, both looking very manly, I might add. So <laughs> that was awesome. I really, really like that. And a lot of people seem to like it too. Oh, you know, why am I chewing gum? What the heck is wrong with me? Yeah, I'm going to spit this out. All right. So, <laughs> a lot of people have been asking me what I did to get to our final image, which we can see right hither. A lot of people have been asking me how I got to this, uh, specifically with like the rock and the water and just the whole atmosphere. So today, I'm going to be showing you how to do that, and we'll be getting into that right now. So right up here. So the first thing you're going to want to do is obviously create your canvas. I'm going to be doing it this way because a few people have been asking about the resolution and, and things that I do for my canvases. So the easiest way to remember it is 8.5 by 11. Or in this case, we're doing a landscape, so we're going to be doing 11 by 8.5. And then I do 300 DPI. Bam, there you go. Bring that up. There we go. Making sure our tablet is working. Yep, we are good to go. Create a new layer so it doesn't draw right on that white space. And select your fighter, your color. We're going to be doing like a blue sky. Blue skies. Skies blue. Red, bro. No, just kidding. All right, now we are going into... Oh, I'm going to talk to you once again about my brush size thingies because people have been asking what I do. So basically all you gotta do is shape dynamics, pen pressure, other dynamics, pen pressure, smoothing, turn it on, and then lock all three of those. So what that's gonna do is no matter which brush you choose, it's gonna keep those properties. And all I really do is I work with the soft and hard edge brushes. I find that they're just all you really need and it gives me that texture at the end of the drawing where you can see just those little hard edges in the painting and the rendering and I really like that. Add some character to it. So we will begin our tutorial now. First thing we did was we picked that blue and I'll show you why. It's going to be our sky. So what we're gonna do is shift F5. It's gonna fill everything. Of course you pick your foreground color. So that is our sky. We'll actually make it a little bit lighter. Well, right about there. So, the first thing that we're going to do is decide what we want to draw in there. And I'm basically just going to be doing some very simple, simple ideas just to illustrate my point of this. Let's see, make sure we're not going over our time. We started at 418, so we should be stopping around 438. Make it about a 20 minute daily. Good and short to the point, that's what I'm talking about. So we're going to do like a desaturated red, almost like a, a brown. 
We're going to be drawing rocks. Wow. Okay, so we'll draw a rock here. All right? And right now it's going to look a little more like a turd, but that's okay. So there's our rock here. There's our rock. And this rock is rendered in a space that we can say, yes, this rock is close to me. <laughs> me and this rock have a very nice relationship, and it is close to me. And based upon the way that we render the shadows and the lights, we can tell that. And underneath, we will create our shadows, like this. It's kind of a crappy shadow, but... <laughs> That's okay. Let's put a little bit of ambient occlusion into that shadow. Basically, that means taking your ambient color and dropping it onto the rock. So there's our rock, right? Now, the way you're going to push this rock back into space is the further back an object goes into space, say this is like our perspective lines. I'll draw them in really quick. So say our horizon is back here, right? So as this rock is going to go back into space, whoops, back into space, right? It's going to basically become more, it's going to become more obstructed by the atmosphere. So basically this rock is going to turn more purple, or I mean more blue, but it's going to be kind of purple. -y. So all you got to do is take that red that represents our shadow, push it like that, put it there. And then kind of eyedropper it until you get the, about the right color that you want. And draw some more rocks. More rocks here, here. More rocks. And then that same color is also going to be a little bit diffused by the blue as well, causing it to be a little less saturated. And also the shadows will even be affected by the atmosphere. And say our light source is coming from you know, over here. We've got like a sunlight type thing. So there you go. There's your sun. It's a bright day. It's a bright sunny day. Sunny day! Alright. I don't know why I keep going back to that. <laughs> um, now, and just to further illustrate the point, let's draw some... Let's draw some big rocks. So rocks that are bigger than this, but because they will be even more obstructed by the atmosphere behind it, they will appear further away. So we got these big old rocks, right? Mountainous rocks. Well, they're not mountains yet, but they're big boulders. Big old boulders. Let's put these, let's get those out of there. So we can still see that our horizon is. You can still see our horizon is right there. Okay. As we go back further, even more obstruction. You see, are you starting to get this now. This is basically how you put together a scene. And most of the time, or actually all of the time, uh, if you want to render a scene and objects or anything and push it further back in the background, all you got to do is show how the atmosphere affects it. things way back here. And feel free to experiment too. Like uh, this yellow light, it'll actually be casting like purpley shadows. So feel free to like really exaggerate that. Like you go red, go more to a purple and like really exaggerate and kind of mess around with those shadows. See what see what happens. See what happens. Put some of that in there. See? Just a very, very slight purple. It, it looks pleasing to the eye. And uh, I've seen a lot of film companies like Pixar and, and people do that in their concept sketches. So that's kind of a fun thing for you to do as well. And then remember, the most important thing is as your objects go back into space, everything is affected by this. The ambient light and the ambient uh, atmosphere. 
And as we ooh. And then yeah. It's very easy. And then the rim lighting is going to occur wherever there's a, a piece or like a like a plane that's reflecting that light right back at you. Usually it tends to be on the very edges like that. And then another cool thing to do when you're rendering in a in a uh, and uh, wow, talk about a brain fart. Oh, when you're rendering in an environment, the best thing to do up front is you take a soft brush and you'll actually just go like this. And you can render in those foreground objects, whatever they may be. You know, put some like jag like grass or something. You know, grass. Grassy grass, grass hills, rocks, more rocks, you know, like that, right? And because you're using this soft brush, it's already kind of giving it that feel that it's close to you and out of focus because of that. And then you can hit the light on the edges with it too. So it's kind of a nice thing to do when you're doing like concept or speed painting. You just kind of it's all about the mixture of colors is, is what's going to give you the thing that you want. And say there's like sand on the floor, so I you know, say it's like a sandy area. So we'll render in this sand, you know, just kind of throwing in that color. It's already got a little bit of that blue behind it, so that's kind of nice. It actually gives us a good mix right off the bat. And I can just throw that in. And again, it gets more, more and more blue the further back it goes. And you can always just paint right over and everything, you know, just until it gives you the the feel that you want. Really, at this point, this is usually how I construct my scenes. Usually, I'll just kind of keep them really, really loose and just kind of more experimental than anything, until I I'm satisfied with the colors and then I go in and I start polishing and and cleaning up. So that is that. Now, what I want to talk to you guys about very quickly is how to render water and like splashing, much like the one you saw in the Fizz Splash. So it's actually quite simple. And this technique I actually figured out for myself when I was illustrating books back in Utah. And I figured out a very simple procedure that you can follow to create water. So take your blue, which is obviously going to be your water color, right? And draw it around, you know, wherever you want the water to be. And then as it goes back, you can kind of fade it, like, make it a little bit more of a gradient, you know. Uh, there we go. Like that. Make it nice, like that aqua color. And then kind of just toss it in little bits here and there. All right? Wherever your light source is. Take that and draw a straight line down. That's going to be the little refraction that you see off the water. Like that. Let's kind of paint these in a little bit more. They're kind of getting a little bit smudged out. But that's okay. Nothing we can't fix with the paintbrush. There we go. Oh, too dark. See, as soon as you put that darker shadow on there, it looks weird. Once you've got your colors laid down, you've already set yourself up for quite a bit of a, of good good things to come, because it's hard for you to throw down a, a hard shadow and have it look right. So that's a good thing. So there's kind of your basic water. Now, what's really fun to do as well is you take your soft brush or your hard brush, whatever you want, and then think of this as like a mirror. Like draw that shape in there and think of it as reflecting. Reflecting those. Say, look at that. Draw in those reflections on the water. And then at the edges, pick a lighter color and just kind of show where that water is meeting the rock. like that. And then for close like little waves and stuff, like all I do is just kind of like 
I don't know, kind of like you did when you were a kid. Like it's like, if, how do you draw waves when you're a kid? You do kind of this thing, right? It's so basically that's all it is, because water is very random, and, and the way it refracts light is just all very random. So you can kind of feel free. Generally, I like to keep this shape here. It's kind of like like these or these, and then I kind of just branch off of that. And then on the insides of those little currents or those little waves, those will also have like little shadows. That. See how just mixing that little bit of color in starts to make it appear more water like. A little dash of color. Yeah, okay. You can always take a little bit of it away if it's looking a little bit too crazy. And remember, as it's coming closer to us, this water is going to become darker as well to show that it is indeed close to us. And we like things that are close to us. Now also, the refractions of all these little waves, right? You can just kind of toss them in on, along these edges. Wherever you think that water would be hitting and the light would be coming back at us. So now you can see clearly we've got this bad boy right here, who's closest to us, this guy who's next in line, and this guy at the back, and then we got these things. And those are all accomplished by using the same color and then just mixing more of this atmosphere with it. Let me get rid of those. <laughs> so now what I'm gonna teach you is another cool trick that I learned, and that's how to render like splash or mid-air water. It's like hit a rock and it's coming up. And to demonstrate that, first thing I'm going to do is draw, let's do something like really strange that wouldn't belong in this picture. Let's draw like a, a bright orange clownfish. Let's draw him right here. So this is going to be our little our little friend for this exercise. And his name will be Roger, the clownfish. This is Roger. He's a nice man. He is not related to Nemo, but he is uh, he is known to come in contact with him. So this is Roger right here. Let's give Roger a little bit of shading too. So he looks like he at least belongs. Nobody wants to be an outcast. Give him a little bit of that. There we go. How about a cute little purple shadow? And he is a little slimy. So, like in our Earthworm Gym daily, for those of you who recall, we will add a specular to him to make him look shiny. A little bit of reflected light on his eyeball and down here. So this is Roger, and he is happy. And he is going to be our little guest here that will help illustrate the point of this splashing water. So Roger is actually going to be behind this rock here. And our splash is going to be coming up from behind him. But for right now, I'll put Roger up here. And we will render the splash here. So the first thing you're going to want to do is take your light source. In this case, it's our yellowish white sun. And you're going to want to draw what that splash, the shape of it, basically. So say we got this strong current coming up here, right? It's like a big wave. And it's hitting your splashing everywhere. So water's going to be going this way. Water's going to be going that way. Water's going to be flying everywhere, basically, right? And feel free to have like these really random you know, splashes. Don't don't just go like this, you know? Don't just make them straight out. Make them kind of S and, and shoot and kind of have these weird curvatures and stuff. So that's going to make it look a lot nicer. Make it look all very nice and organic. Like that. And then once you have your, once you have your shape in there, 
Now what you're going to do is think of everything that is behind that water, right? Think of everything that is behind it. And it's good if you do this on another layer too, so you can actually see it. Because what you can do, one thing you can do is you can just simply erase it like this. Grab your eraser and go to a soft brush. And then you can begin to erase wherever that water you think it would be a little like more thin, you know, like where all the water droplets aren't condensed together. It's kind of like a sheet. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it is to manually paint it in. But I think usually I I think usually I just draw it on a separate layer and then just erase it. That's the easiest way to do it. Because when you have things that are behind the water, that water actually goes behind it and it will still show what is behind it, obviously. And because of that, and usually typically in this case, when there's water, I talked about painting the actual colors behind it. What you'll do is you won't be able to see it that quite that clearly. So what you want to do is kind of eye drop that and kind of blur it a little bit. Like that, right? So kind of take wherever that water's hitting hitting and kind of blur it in. That's about right. And then draw in kind of just like the noise of the, the splashing, obviously. See, so we see uh, Richard, no, what was his name? <laughs> Roger! Not Richard, Roger. Richard is his brother. Richard is his brother who is looking at him. Very scared like because he is smashing into that rock. So Richard is here and he is worried because he's, he's afraid that his brother is getting hurt, but he's not. He's simply illustrating our point. So see how those colors come through, but they're still distorted slightly by, they're still distorted slightly by the colors of the water. And then the final thing that you're going to do to really give it that final touch is take your hard brush, grab your light source, go into that water, and start adding in your speculars. That's basically anywhere, actually it doesn't even need to be a hard brush. You can do that later if you want. The point is, is that grab a brush with your your hot specular on it and then start throwing it in. And you also can see that I use this in the fizz teaser splash as well. And what this does is this this gives us the final look of the water. And all it really is is just that principle. It's all about just rendering the water and then erasing inside, even in these water droplets. See, if you do that, if you erase in here, it gives it that look of the water. That's all the, that's all the illusion is. It's just the outline, the colors behind it, and then the highlight on top to show the, the form of it. And then, of course, the, the breaking here on the side. Lots of little speckling everywhere. There's probably a custom brush you can make to do this, but I kind of enjoy doing it myself. Gives it that, that really cool final touch. So you can see this water is hitting, and it's just like gathering all that sunlight, refracting it back at you, and just going, Psh, and then still capturing the colors behind it. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is a simple tutorial on how to render space in your environment paintings and hopefully a little bit of a look into how I render water. And hopefully that was easy enough for you to understand and it helped you out. So before we end this week's episode, I would like to ask a question to the audience. And that is, how do you feel about the Kane Kale show being aired on Saturday mornings? Because as of late, Work, the work schedule has been getting a little bit to me. I haven't been getting as much sleep as I need to. 
And I really want to continue doing these, but I feel that I'll be able to step up the quality of the shows and make sure that they're all on the same level of quality if I'm able to release on Saturday. So please, let me know what you think of that. And also, before we go, I just wanted to say thank you all for everyone who has subscribed and continuing to watch my show. All the comments that I get of you saying that I helped you out or inspiring you or whatever to totally make my day and make doing the show worth it. Even if there was two people, even if I had two subs that watched this, you know, because I could help them out, I'd still keep doing it. Because it's not only a show for you, it is an exercise for me. So we both benefit from it, and I really enjoy doing it. So I just wanted to say thank you all from the bottom of my heart for watching the Kane Kale Show. And with that, I want to see you guys drawing pictures. I want to see you drawing environments. I want to see you drawing water. Roger and Richard, I want to see you drawing pictures of everything and submit it to the Facebook. And with that, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. I'm Keenan Lafferty, and I will see you guys next time.